Hello there and welcome to the video today. We're looking at London's sculptures and statues. Now, one of the things I love about London is there's so many interesting and unusual statues and sculptures dotted around the city. In the very centre, there are over 300 alone. So today I'm going to bring you on a little bit of a guide and show you my favourites in the animal statues category. Now, sit back, relax and together let's discover London. Okay, so let's kick off our adventure with a stop at Paddington Station to meet Paddington Bear. Now this absolutely adorable literary character is sitting under the main station clock in Paddington Station on his suitcase waiting to be rescued by the Brown family. Now you can cuddle up close to him and take an absolutely fantastic photograph for social media. You can even brush his hat for good luck. He's perched on platform one in the station. He's quite easy to find and definitely worth checking out so make sure to put that on your list. And here on Philpot Lane in the shadow of the Sky Garden we have London's smallest public sculptures, the Philpot Lane mice, tussling perpetually over a piece of cheese, a bit like my parents at Christmas. Now apparently the story is that two workers died or one killed another in a fight, either in 1670 or 1862. Now nobody can quite agree on the true version of events, but what they can agree on is that the two workers were fighting over a sandwich that was most likely scoffed by the mice. Now next time I eat a sandwich, please make sure to make a sculpture of me. Just a little bit bigger than this one, please. Okay, next up is my personal favorite statue on this list. This is Hodge the Cat. He lives behind the Old Cheshire Cheese, which is on Fleet Street. So just come down this lovely picturesque alleyway and you will find him. Now, it's really, really beautiful down here, especially around sunset, so do make sure to bring your camera. Just keep heading down towards Gough Square and you can't possibly miss him. And as you get close to the square, you'll see Hodge the Cat. And here he is, Hodge the Cat. He's sitting on a dictionary and he's got uh, oyster shells in front of him and someone has placed a 10p coin for good luck. Now who was Hodge the Cat? Hodge the Cat was um, a cat owned by Dr. Samuel Johnson who wrote the first dictionary. He lived just over there and uh, Hodge was very spoiled. Um, he was the only cat in the household to have a name and uh, as you can see, I am a very fine cat. A very fine cat indeed, purr. Okay, so next up we're going across to Chinatown in Soho to Wardour Street to meet a very unusual lion. Now lions are a very big part of Chinese culture. They symbolize guardianship and protection, but this lion is unlike any other. He is multicolored, he is perched on the wall. He is very photogenic, very colorful, and he's got these very wide eyes and big smile. So he's kind of ferocious, but also playful. He's definitely, definitely worth checking out and I highly recommend it. Okay, for our next statues, we're heading across to the London School of Economics and it is ironically quite economic because we get two statues for the price of one. First up, there is a penguin and there's also an elephant. Now these statues are incredibly popular with the student population who come here on their graduation day to take photographs with the elephant symbolizing wisdom and the penguin symbolizing something else, perhaps looking like them in their graduation gowns. But for tourists, it is a great spot to come and get an unusual photograph in London. 
Okay, and for our final stop, we're heading across to Trafalgar Square, but not for the iconic lions. Even though they are magnificent, especially in the sunlight, we're here for something a little bit different. Okay, so this statue is called The End, and it combines a fly, a cherry, a drone, and some cream to create something very deep and profound that mere mortals like me could never hope to understand. Well, it is actually quite interesting. It's quite eye-catching, it's quite unique, and it is relatively bizarre. Now, the drone on it actually works, so you can video yourself, or video yourself videoing yourself. It is definitely worth taking a photograph of, because otherwise people won't believe you when you tell them about it. And it's situated right in the heart of London, in Trafalgar Square, so what's not to love? Okay guys, so that's the end of our video today. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, tell me in the comments which was your favorite, did you disagree with my list? Is there anything you think I should have covered? Um, if you have any ideas for future videos, do let me know. I'm always on the lookout for kind of unusual and bizarre things in London. But yeah, thank you for watching. Do like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. But in the meantime, take it easy.